As you can see, our Goblin Housemaid GL888, shown here, is back together in one piece. Now, I'm really sorry that I didn't film the um, reassembly process. I just basically kind of got into the zone yesterday evening um, with that flipping motor. Oh my God, that motor was so frustrating. And I just, I, I just had to get it done. I had to just get everything back inside, reassemble the machine. There's a hair sticking out the front there. Whose hair is that? It's huge. Ugh, lovely. Um, and I just basically couldn't stop myself. I just had to get it done. It was so difficult. It's just unbelievably, unbelievably hard. To give you a very brief um, synopsis, really, of what I had to go through with it. The last time we saw it, I kind of felt that, because uh, it was all apart and the motor was on the bench, and it was running, but there was just something not right with it. And I, I knew it was something to do with the fan side bearing, but I couldn't really put my finger on what it was. You saw how hard it was to take that motor apart. I mean, it's really, really difficult to to work on. Effectively, those, those motors were never supposed to be worked on. You were never supposed to be able to change the bearings on them because how they were made, just all riveted up everything is riveted there's no screws or anything you can't easily service them but i thought to myself no i'm not gonna let this beat me i have to i have to do it and i have to work out what's going on so i found that new bearing put that bearing in it went through the whole procedure took the fuel call out drilled off the end uh, drilled off the bearing caps put the new bearing in the bottom uh reassembled everything riveted everything back up Use some screws and some nuts to seal the two halves of, of the motor it, uh, back into one unit. Ran it, as you saw, and there was still something wrong. And I couldn't work out what the problem with it was. Um, so I took it apart again. <laughs> this time I didn't have to take off the, um, the top end frame. Because the fuel coil had already been t t taken out, I could lever the fuel coil out of the um, bottom frame it was really it's difficult it is really difficult because there's very little access and the more you do it the more you risk breaking the fill coil so i've got that out and i'm playing with the fan side bearing um, and then i thought oh maybe i've put the bearing cover on upside down because if you look at the uh, bearing cover it's kind of raised like that so one side is raised and the other side is flat and i put the flat side back against the bearing right i thought that's it. That's what I've, I've, I've done wrong. So I drilled it out again, drilled out the rivets, turned the bearing cover over, riveted it, riveted it, 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 it back in of what I was thought was the, the right way round, reassembled the entire motor again, um, did it all up with all the screws and bolts, ran it on the bench, and I couldn't, I couldn't see that it was any better. If you see what I mean, um, I thought uh, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Not sure. Put the put the fan casing back on. Put the fan back on. Ran it again on the bench, and it was just going. <laughs> and I was like, Why are you doing this? Why? What is what is going on here? Is it uh, the shaft that's worn? Is is the is the the shaft moving in the bearing? Um, what is going on? And then it kind of twigs in my mind that actually maybe what's going on here is that the bearing itself is moving within the end frame. Because when I pushed it in to the end frame to reassemble it, it went in snug. It was tight in its, in its little hole. Um, so you put the shaft through and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that seems fine. So you, you reassemble everything. And then it's just the, the the shaft with the with the um, thread on it is it's I can feel it moving again and obviously as I say it's doing this noise um, so I thought oh god I've got to take it apart again take it apart again stripped it all down took the field coil out 
took the end frame off and I thought, right, hang on a minute, and I shook it. I shook the end frame. And you can hear the bearing going. So the bearing was moving within the end frame. I thought to myself, ah, that must be it. That's the reason why you're getting this noise. Because it's not the it's not the fact that the that the bearings failed, because it was a replacement bearing. Um, it's not it's not the fact that the shaft is worn, that is sitting on the bearing perfectly fine. But the bearing itself is moving within the end frame. When you assemble it again, the bearing moves back and becomes loose in its hole. Like, oh, for the love of God. How does that happen? It's got a compression ring around the bearing to stop it from doing that. But that obviously wasn't doing its job. Maybe over you know, the past 40 years, it's, it's the metal's worn, maybe? But how does metal wear? Ugh, it's, ugh, it's ridiculous. So I took it all apart again. I took it all apart again. I drilled the rivets out again of the flipping end frame. And I'm like, oh. This is hours, guys. This is hours and hours of work. You can, you can see why I couldn't film it all, because it just took so long. And I thought, okay, I need to pack the bearing in its, in its hole. So what I did was um, I got a compression washer, which is basically the kind of washer you would have um, within a, a, a Hoover brush roll. So it's a, a little washer that's kind of like, u-shaped so when you press against it there's tension there so imagine that um you've got the motor motor end frame you put the bearing in you put the compression washer in front of the well rather behind the bearing then put the cap back on rivet that back into place so i gave it a good poke and a prod and, and a shake and the bearing was okay it was in place and it was holding in place as well. I thought, oh wow, this is brilliant. This is good. So I reassembled the motor again for like the fourth time, ran it on the bench and it was fine. It was absolutely fine. I thought, oh my God, that, this is brilliant. So then I put the fan casing on and the fan and I was like wiggling the fan. There's no movement. There's no movement at all. That is perfectly fine. Ran it with the fan casing on, sounded great. I was like, oh my God, this is this is fantastic. Just get it back in the cleaner. Just get everything back in there and call it done. <sighs> so it's done, brilliant. And now it even has out that soldering iron is on and it shouldn't be. I'm amazed that that soldering iron is not burst into flames, but there we go, or melted anything. <sighs> Sake. Honestly, like a, like a death trap here. Um, so let's plug it in, and now you can hear it running. And I've also fitted the bulb. <laughs> it's a little bit, and I think it's because uh, something is fouling inside the motor it's foul um but that's kind of to be expected it's gone through quite a lot of trauma and i think that will sort itself out so that's great fantastic it's back together there is still one small problem which i will fix at some point i might be able to demonstrate it to you now <laughs> You can hear the brush roll um, is is jiggling up and down. Um, now I'm not sure if that is the fact because we saw that when we looked at it, uh, the central bar of it was not 100% attached. It, it, there was some play in it, so I don't know if that's the barrel moving on the um, on the axle, or it's worn at either end here where the brush roll end caps go in. It's going to be one of those two things. If it's the end caps, then that's that, that's okay. That's reasonably easy to fix because you can just uh, pack it out. You can pack out the area where the end caps sit. Um, if it's the axle itself, then that is going to be harder. But um, I'm not going to do that now. I need to move on. Um, I need to. I need to look at other things. Um, 
but we do have a working housemaid, so that is really good news. Um, I just realised as well now that look, this bag is leaking. There we go. We've got all kinds of rubbish coming out, and it's because the seal has failed. If I hold it up so there you can see it, see the see the seal has failed there. So this bag is leaking. It's no good, and it has probably filled the. Um, let's take it off. Probably filled the dust box with dirt. Yes, I think it has. So that all needs to be cleaned out. This bag is no good. It can go in the bin. Um, I think I do have some more bags. I think I think I've got one left. Would you believe? Just one bag left. So at least we have a bag and we can use the machine. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a clean. I'm going to put a bag in it. Uh, probably not going to film that because you've seen me cleaning machines before. Although, hang on a second. I don't mind that solving one. Um, I think we can actually take this out, you know. I think we can remove this panel. I've got a screwdriver here. Shall we, shall we just try and do it? Let's, uh, yeah, I think if you undo these two screws, you can actually remove this. Well, I was going to say it's like a filter cover, but it's not at all. There's no filter in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. So you can take it off like that. And then you can see completely inside the, the dust box. Makes it a bit easy to clean, um, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to give it a clean, and then we will um, go down to the lounge, and we'll actually see it in action. This has been a long time coming, but I'm very pleased to be able to use this cleaner. Here we go then. First time using the Goblin Housemaid GL888. Now, as I said to you previously, it's been 28 years since I last saw one of these. However, I don't think I have ever used one. I think this is the first time in my life that I'm going to use one of these housemaids, which is amazing, frankly. And the reason I say that is because the one that I saw in 1993 was broken. Um, it didn't work. The motor had failed and I was um, I was 15 in 93. I didn't know how to fix it. God, I can barely fix it now at the age of 43. So yeah, that one was doomed. So that's enough talking. There's enough talking going on. Let's, oh God, this is really quite, this is quite something actually for me. I wanted to use one of these for a long time, so I need to uh, oh, steady myself. Right, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
honestly, that was a ridiculously hard fought battle, but I think the victory in the end speaks for itself because I do now have a working Goblin Housemaid GL888 from 1979 Disco. <laughs> so the ultimate result from a lot of work and a lot of pain was worth it in the end. Not to say it's finished yet, we still have some more to do on this, like this uh, cracked bodywork here. Need to repair that. Next summer it needs to go through the retrobite process to bring it back to its original nice blue, original light blue, rather than this horrible kind of bluey green that it currently is. But yeah, my god, that was some work. So now we need to find somewhere to put it. And I know exactly where it's going to go. Because I am convinced that whilst it's nice to see a row of Dyson, D D blah, Dyson DCO ones, I think there are some more interesting vacuum cleaners that can go here. The O ones are fine, um, and there is one very special one here which we will get to at some point. However, I do think that maybe a selection of goblins would be preferable to a selection of Dysons. If I can extract myself from this chair that is trying to mate with me. Ugh. So, one very late Dyson DC01, I think from 2000. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. So, yes, this is a, a 2000 model. Very late in the run, so worth keeping. But for now, not what we're interested in. Because this housemaid needs to go next to its soft bag brother. And of course, it's wider than a DCO one, so it won't fit. So we have to move another DCO one. Is that, is, is that in your way? Oh, I don't know. God, it's filthy here. Okay, there we go. Nice. Two goblin housemaids together. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so nice to find some more of them. Maybe find the Electra model. I did. I, I did have that model when I was in school. Actually, I had that Electra model when I was in school. It was orange. It was an orange housemaid, but with Electra written across the front. Um, it wasn't this small style headlight, it was a much larger plate. I don't think it was a headlight exactly, I think it was just a plate that said Electra. So, I need to change all this around. I need to find some more goblins. And where am I going to find some goblins? It's not like I have any goblins, is it? <laughs> not like I'm obsessed with goblin. Shut up. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching this uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these housemaids. They are fascinating cleaners. But until the next time, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.